Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at the most recent release in Asobo's famous flyer series. This particular aircraft was slated for release some time ago in the sim but unfortunately got delayed it has now finally arrived. And whilst the delay may have been a little bit longer than some of us were expecting, certainly I can say in the case of this particular add-on it is well worth the wait. We are of course talking about the AT Simulations AN2 Colt, again released through Asobo as part of their famous fly series. AT Simulations being the same developer that bought us the P149D for the sim, another very nice aircraft. I have to say, much like the recently released DHC4 Caribou, the AN2 was not necessarily an aircraft that I was personally desperately looking forward to, but certainly I was intrigued by it. Much like the Caribou though, once again the AT Simulations AN2 has completely surpassed my expectations, it's an absolutely cracking out on, especially given the price. With that in mind then, I thought we'd have some fun with the aircraft and review the product as we go. In terms of our flight today, it is one that of course I hope you'll enjoy, I've tried to go for something a little bit out of the ordinary. The beautiful scenery that you can see in front of you are the mountain ranges of Afghanistan, and we're going to be taking the AN2 on a hypothetical UN mission from Kabul over to Jalalabad. The flight should take us around 35 minutes, as you can see plenty of high terrain en route, we're going to be doing as well a little bit of NDB navigation as we go. We'll be carrying out a full flight, and as I say we'll be reviewing the Colt along the way. As always I do hope you enjoy the video, if you do then please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Let's now head back to earlier this morning where we find the AN2 on the ground in Kabul. So here we are then in the absolutely superb cockpit of the AT Simulations AN2. I'm sure you'll agree that AT Simulations have done a really nice job with the aircraft both internally and externally. Particularly internally I think the level of attention to detail is great. The aircraft really feels the part as well. Really feels like an old Eastern Bloc workhorse. Very interesting aircraft to learn as well. Again, as is pretty typical of Eastern Bloc design, every system more or less has an associated switch. Even down to the point of each individual beacon light having an associated switch. And as well, of course, with the cockpit being in Cyrillic, it's quite an interesting aircraft to learn. It does take a little bit of time to get used to if you're more used to flying a typical Western aircraft. So I've spent some time with the Colt. I'm pretty happy now with the startup procedures. We'll run through the before start checks. The flight controls, just checking those are full and free. You'll notice as well, pretty decent animation there on the wiring through from the oak. For the attitude indicators, they're both set to caged. Battery master switch can go on. Com radio power switches, both selected on. Fuel shutoff valve is set through to open. I'll do the same for the pneumatic valve. But the pneumatics, we're just looking for above zero there on the pressure. I presume that's in kilograms per centimetre squared. Currently showing around 10. So we do have good air pressure, we'll set the parking brake. Fuel selector can go on to both. The beacon lights can go on. Anti-fire system power switch is selected on. The engine parameters gauge switch, fuel quantity indication switch, all temperature switch and flaps indication switches all selected on. And for the fuel meter gauge mode switch that's set to both. Checking our fuel quantity, we fully fueled up the aircraft for our flight over to Jalalabad today. Just making sure the gauge reads correctly. And sure enough there we are showing a fully fueled aircraft. So for the start itself, the prop lever can go through to high RPM. Mixture lever, interestingly the mixture lever in the after position is fully rich, which doesn't really Align with the rest of the logic there on the engine controls, but nevertheless the mixture is set fully rich. The manual fuel pump will prime that around three to four times. And for the engine prime, pretty cold outside, so we'll go for seven pumps here on the prime. As always, checking the prop area. A little bit trickier to see over the nose of the AN2. Looks to be clear, as usual we'll give everyone a shout. Clear prop! Max can go through to both. The start master switch can go on. Quite an interesting start on the AN2. Firstly we'll spool up the flywheel. You'll hear that spooling up in just a moment's time. We're waiting here until we see below 80 amps on the ammeter. which we're just coming up on now. 
So we can move the starter switch across, we'll engage the clutch, and the engine should fire. Right, so we do have a good start. We'll bring in the throttle. We're looking to idle around seven to eight hundred RPM. The RPM gauge located just off to the right here of the RMI. So idling now up at around eight hundred RPM for the oil pressure that's come up. We're looking for at least three kilograms per centimeter squared. It's currently showing around four. Start master is off. Alternator can go on, and the alternator warning light there going out. The power DC AC inverter switch, we'll put that through to main and we'll get the warning lights and the panel lights on as well. The before taxi checks, carburetor heat is set cold. The power for the trim tabs as well as the flat motors, the associated switches there can all go on. Power for the cow flaps and the all cooler shutters, they're both set on and powers to the flight instruments. Again, both switches selected on. As well, we can power up the intercom, the transponder, the ADF. We'll just leave the rad out off for now, otherwise you'll hear we'll get an associated tone. We'll turn that on for the approach into Jalalabad, most likely. The ADF power switch is on, navigation lights are selected on, altimeters are set, currently showing around 1,780 meters makes sense. We're up at around nearly 6,000 feet here in Kabul. Engine parameters. Oil temperature is now up in the green. Cylinder head temperature is coming up. And again, the oil pressure looks good. We'll leave the parking brake on for now. Tailwheel lock is off. The taxi checks. We'll get the taxi light on. Landing lights we can leave off now. Peter heat can go on. We'll get the ADF radio set up for the flight. So firstly turning the unit on. We'll just use the number one radio. The Carball NDB is on a frequency of 365. There's three, six. And five, you can see we've got a good signal there from the NDB. We'll just identify that as well. Thank you, Singapore 308. Thank you. Later on we're going to be tuning up the Jalalabad NDB, that's on a frequency of 265, but we'll leave Carbol up for now. In terms of the directional gyro, 120 there, the compass showing around 285, so we'll set the directional gyro. That's just going to take us a little bit of time here to slew around. And then once we've got 285 set here on the directional gyro, we'll set up the RMI as well for the departure. Going to be departing out to the east on a uh, heading or a course of 095. So there's 285 set. And as I say, we'll get the RMI set up here as well ahead of time. We can align the RMI later on to the directional driver once we're airborne. Alpha Kilo Kilo Clay Land 07 left, wind 09006 north, cost first. So there's our course of 095. We'll just get the before takeoff checks out of the way here as well. There's no run up in the checklists. So parking brake is set, checking both the voltmeter and the ammeter. Carburetor heat is set cold, mixture is set fully rich, fuel selector is once again set to both, altimeters are checked, heading gyro again showing 285 versus 285. Trims are set, we have three greens. Flaps will leave up for the takeoff. Pretty decent stall capabilities with the AN2. We've got plenty of runway. We are at high altitude, but nevertheless, we're not going to need the flaps for the takeoff. Engine parameters are once again checked. The oil temperature now nicely up into the green, and cylinder head temperatures there still coming up. We can uncage the attitude indicators. Cow flaps and oil shutters will set open. So, firstly, the oil shutters. You can see they're coming through to the fully open position. Kilo, Kilo, Taxi, Mountain Angle, Delta, Echo, Juliet, Cross, Sunway, 07 right. 
And we'll do the same for the cow flaps. Very nice soundscape on the aircraft overall, I have to say. Even the cow flaps here, there is an associated motor sound. There are just one or two sounds missing. So cow flaps are set fully open, beacon lights are both on, taxi light is on. We'll get the landing lights on as well now as we make our way out towards the runway. Navigation lights are on and back on the throttle. Part brake can come off and we'll make our way here out towards the holding point for runway 1-1. Right, so we have ourselves lined up here on runway 11, just confirming that there on the compass. Same there on the directional gyro. Part brake can come off. We want full power for the takeoff. Looking to rotate around 85 to 90 kilometers an hour. I find just a very small amount of backstick initially. Tends to help with the aircraft handling. We're going to need right rudder as well. The aircraft's going to swing out to the left. Here comes the swing, so feeding in the right rudder, letting the tail pick itself up off the ground and then easing back on the yoke. The AN2 almost flying itself off the runway, very benign in terms of its takeoff handling characteristics. It's a pretty easy aircraft to get airborne. Not entirely sure how realistic that is. It would be nice as well to see more effects in terms of shaking, vibration, both in terms of sounds and visual effects. That does tend to be a weaker area in the sim generally, but certainly for this sort of aircraft, it really is noticeable in its absence. Alpha Kilo Kilo, contact ground 11. Anyway, for the climb, we're looking for between 140, 150 kilometers an hour. Currently doing 150, so we'll trim for that. And we'll just keep full power a little bit longer here until we come up, gain a little bit more altitude. Just confirming the flaps are up. And we're currently tracking inbound towards the Garbal NDB. We'll just wait until we come over the station, then we can get things set up for our outbound course. Overall though, I very much like how the AN2 flies. It does feel heavy on the controls. It's a very stable aircraft as well, pretty much requiring no input on my part here at the moment. We've got it trimmed out and it's just sitting where I put it. Just come up through 2,200 meters, we'll come back to climb power. So just slightly back on the throttle, and we're looking for 2,000 RPM here in the climb. The RPM gauge just out to the right of the RMI. Uh, port, port two, control, so power is set, again for the temperatures and pressures. Everything nicely in the green currently, so we'll leave the all cooler shutters and the car flaps where they are for now. Interestingly, I have noticed on the AN2, leaving the mixture in fully rich, the aircraft still seems to perform very well regardless. Again, we departed roughly 6,000 feet out of carbon, and the aircraft still had an abundance of power, so I haven't really found thus far that leaning the mixture is really required. And we're just going to leave the mixture where it is for the sake of uh, flight here today. So just needing a very small amount of uh, right rudder here as well to keep the aircraft balanced, which again I suspect in reality you'd probably need a bit more rudder at these sorts of power settings. They're coming up through two and a half thousand meters. That needle just starting to get a little bit twitchy, so I expect we're going to come overhead the station fairly shortly. Well, certainly, Afghanistan coming out of Kabul, pretty spectacular part of the world. Obviously Afghanistan tends to be associated with some less pleasant global events, but it's a really beautiful country from what I've seen in the sim. It's a little bit of a shame, it doesn't seem to have full imagery coverage, there's quite a bit of generic scenery around, which obviously isn't visually quite as appealing. Nevertheless, very enjoyable flight thus far and I think should make for a really interesting route. So it looks like we have 
just coming over the station. It's a little bit tricky to tell there, but I think that's the head of the needle. So we've got 095 set. We're actually pretty much on course already. For those of you who might remember from my Caribou video, we're now flying the tail of the needle here. So if we want to change the course, we can pull the tail of the needle around by changing our heading. So for example here, if we wanted to come onto a course of 080, we'd fly out to the left, perhaps onto a heading of 060. That will pull the needle around once we see 080. We're on the 080 course outbound from the station. But I'd say currently pretty much bang on where we want to be. On our heading of 095, so things looking good. We'll obviously continue the climb here. We've still got a fair bit of high terrain ahead of us to clear. And just continuing to come up on the throttle as we climb. For now maintaining our current power setting. Just coming up on 3,000 meters. We'll get the radar on now. Again, we'll use that for the approach into Jalalabad, but it'll also give us a little bit more terrain awareness en route. Not that I'm planning to find necessarily quite that close to the terrain. Anyway, for now, we'll just continue up here in the climb, obviously getting ourselves clear of the mountains en route. Mostly we'll be maintaining visual separation as we go. Tracking outbound for now, 095 from Kabul in towards Jalalabad itself. Right, so we have made our way over the high terrain, now approaching inbound towards Jalalabad. You can see the city here off to our one o'clock. And the airfield just out towards the east, you might just about be able to see the uh, flashing light there off at the airfield. In terms of our current configuration, we're doing 150 kilometers an hour now. We've got flaps 15, just to try and help get the aircraft down here. I do find that the AN2 seems to be lacking a little bit in drag, perhaps. We'll talk more about that in just a second. Anyway, in terms of our descent checks, Engine parameters look good. Carburetor heat is set on. Fuel selector is set to both. Parking brake is off. Air pressure, we're looking for more than 40 kilograms per centimeter squared. Currently showing just above 40. So we do have good air pressure. And again, the flaps are set to 15 degrees. Landing lights can go on. Yeah, so as I say, I find it quite hard to bleed off speed in the AN2, quite hard as well to get the aircraft into any sort of steep approach, which I do find surprising given that it does look to be a very draggy airframe. Obviously we've got the uh, the biplane wings, we've got plenty of struts and bracings as well. And as well, given that the aircraft performs pretty well in terms of stall, I would have thought we'd be able to get a pretty steep approach out of the Colt. That doesn't seem to be the case in the sim. You'll probably notice as well during the landing here, it's very hard to bleed off speed in the flare. So the aircraft can tend to float quite a bit on the landing. Looks like we are just getting a touch high here on profile. Again, we've got some flap, we're pretty low on the power, but we'll take the flaps all the way through to 45 degrees. 
you'll see even with that, again, not much drag associated with it. Our descent rate is not going to increase drastically, which is quite surprising with 45 degrees of flap. Anyway, in terms of our before landing checks, the prop RPM is set through to the high RPM position. For the SB we're looking for between 82 and 110 kilometers an hour for the touchdown. Laps we have 45 degrees set. Landing lights are on. Let's see before landing checks complete. Just coming up onto a uh, final here for runway 13. Could probably make out the runway a little bit more clearly now. Still a little bit higher on profile, so we're almost all the way back on the throttle. Again, though, really enjoyed the flight in the end too. It's another great option for the sim, especially given the price. Pretty complex systems, as you've seen already, or at least pretty detailed systems. And the same goes with the engine management. You do actually have to open and close your shutter flaps, the cow flaps there as well, to manage both the oil temperature and the cylinder head temperature. So that's really nice, quite an involved operation of the aircraft overall. And just on a personal note as well, I'm really enjoying flying something a little bit different. I'm very used to Western aircraft at this point. Generally I can jump into an add-on and get it figured out in a reasonable period of time, but this one certainly took me a little bit longer than usual and I enjoyed the challenge. It was nice to fly something a bit different. So for me that's definitely a bonus of the AN2. I presume as well the AN225 will be the same, but we haven't had a chance to look at that on the channel yet. I do intend to in a future video. Just wait until I have the time to really dedicate to that sort of video. Anyway, nicely lined up on final. Profile looking pretty good vertically at the moment. Once again, really beautiful scenery here as we come in towards Jalalabad. And that Orbex mesh certainly just making everything look all the more spectacular. So we want to start reducing our speed here. As I say, it's really hard to bleed off speed in the flare, so we'll get ourselves back to around 110 kilometers an hour. Once again, the AN2 noticeable in terms of its stability. It's very easy to get the aircraft trimmed down. It'll just sit where you put it. So a very pleasant aircraft to fly, as I mentioned already. And as I said, it does feel reasonably heavy on the controls. I would just, as I say, question that level of drag, though. Still really struggling to bleed off any speed here. Right back at idle now, full flap. There's the red out, so just coming through 150 metres, just below 500 feet above the ground, coming through about 700 metres on the altimeter. We'll get rid of the car, Pete. So speed just starting to come back to a more reasonable range. Again, we don't really want to come over the threshold any faster than 110, otherwise I find we'll end up chewing up a lot of runway. So happy with the speed now, happy in terms of our vertical profile, just trimming the aircraft. We'll actually just aim to land slightly long here as well since the parking area is down at the upwind end of the runway for us. So back through 100 kilometers an hour, the aircraft still floating as you can see, just holding it off. Let's touch down. So we did touch down about the correct speed there, but again I just think it takes an awful long time for that speed to bleed off. Anyway, we'll just continue to roll through here, we'll vacate off of the uh, second left. We'll bring ourselves in towards the parking area, we'll get shut down. As usual, we'll run through a few thoughts on the product. Just feeding a little bit of power here to pick up our speed so we can make our way down to the exit. Try and get off the runway here in a reasonably timely fashion. Bravo. 
So the exit just coming up on our left. Starting to break, we'll get the aircraft slowed down, it's a 90 degree turn. And again, really nice sound effects there, you can hear the pneumatics on the brakes. Just wait until we clear the runway and then we can carry out our after landing checks. So if the after landing checks, flaps can come up. And we'll get the cow flaps opened up here as well. Same for the all cooler shutters. We'll open those all the way up again, try and keep the engine as cool as we can before we get it shut down. And the all cooler shutters there fully open. That will just swing ourselves around. I do find as well the aircraft actually picks up quite a bit of speed even back at idle power which is probably a little bit unrealistic. So we are stationary, part brake is set, again coming up to 800 rpm, we'll just get the rad out off there as well. Heat heat can come off. And same there for the ADF. For the shutdown checks, the part brake is set. Engine parameters look good. The power switches for the flaps and the trim tabs are off. Instrument power is off and power settings to the cow flaps and all shutters go off as well. We'll get the landing lights off, same for the taxi lights. And as well we can get the Intercom ADF transponder off. According to the checklist for the shutdown, we just cut the mags. So we'll do that. Good shutdown there on the engine. I quite like the animation there as well. Reasonable amount of time there to run down. The anti fire system power switch is off. The power DC AC inverter switch is off. Alternator can come off. Get the warning lights and the panel lights off. Engine instruments off. Beacon can come off. Com radios can come off. And lastly, we get the battery master off. So there you go, guys. I do hope you enjoyed our outing in the AT Simulations AN2 Colt. I know I certainly enjoyed the flight and I think the AN2 is an absolutely excellent effort from AT Simulations, a really nice offering as well from Sobo. It's brilliant now that Sobo do seem to be bringing in some high quality products in both the Famous Flyer and the Local Legends series. It means of course for us we get some excellent add-ons at some very reasonable prices. These sorts of aircraft I would argue are very enjoyable, really wherever you lie on the simming spectrum, as well they're great for anyone that's working on a bit of a budget. Anyway, as usual, we'll briefly just run through what I think of the product. We'll break things down into some negatives and some positives. I'll try and keep things fairly brief here today. Again, I do think the product is excellent and it's also incredibly cheap. So any minor shortfalls that the product has, I do find personally are pretty easily forgiven. In terms of my negatives, pretty minor points overall really. I do think it would have been nice to see a little bit more wear and tear on the aircraft, particularly externally. It does tend to look like a brand new airframe. Of course, in reality, the AN2 was a real workhorse. It was definitely flogged pretty hard around various parts of the world. And so it would be nice to see an aircraft that reflects that a little bit more. Similarly, I was a little bit disappointed with the livery selection available. There certainly are some nice liveries available, but not only again do they look factory fresh. Also, there was no military paint schemes included with the product, which I thought was a bit of a shame. I know that previously AT Simulations did release the AN2 in older sims with those liveries available. I don't know whether or not that was a choice on Asobo's part. Certainly, of course, there are issues selling add-ons with weapons available on the marketplace, but as far as I'm aware, there's no stipulations that you can't include military liveries. Indeed, there are a number of other add-ons that have done so. I certainly would have liked to have seen some period-appropriate military liveries for the product. Sounds on the aircraft overall were very good. There was just one or two controls that seemingly were missing sounds, and similarly, I found that the startup sounds perhaps could use a bit more work. The startup sounds were very nice in most respects, you could hear the flywheel spooling up for example, but I was expecting to hear a more prolonged coughing and spluttering from the engine as it fired up. Similarly with the external sounds at the moment, there's no coughing or spluttering whatsoever, you just hear the flywheel spool up 
and then suddenly the engine is idling. I'm being quite picky here though with my negatives, again overall the sounds on the aircraft are very well done, and again especially at this sort of price. The only other negative really that I can think of with the product, and this is an educated guess on my part, but as I say the aircraft to me didn't really seem to have enough drag. Once again very hard to bleed off speed, hard to get the aircraft into a steep approach, even using 45 degrees of flaps. As I mentioned during the flight, just looking at the AN2's airframe it certainly looks like it would be a fairly draggy aircraft, of course you've got the double wings, you've got quite a few struts and braces as well. And I would have expected at 45 degrees of flap we could have got a pretty steep descent rate, bled off the speed quite easily. And once again as we discussed, during the flare it took a long time as well for the speed to bleed off there. If I was being really picky it would have been nice as well to have a couple of external fixtures and fittings, for example at least some chocks, the ability as well to remove the pilots. I tried doing that at least using the fuel and load manager, that didn't seem to have an effect. But once again, I think given that I paid less than £10 for the add-on, you can't really complain about those sorts of things, and overall I think you're getting excellent value for money with the product. In terms of the positives, as I think you can tell, I have a lot of good things to say about the AN2. Modelling and texturing, with the small exceptions that we mentioned just a moment ago, I think is very well done, particularly in the cockpit, it looks very photorealistic, lots of attention to detail. AT simulations have done a really great job as well of creating the right ambience, the right atmosphere within the cockpit. Again, it would have been nice to have a little bit more rattling and shaking at various points throughout the flight, but that's a general sim deficit, so I'm not going to hold them too much on that one. The flight model otherwise, apart from the caveat that we just mentioned, generally felt good. The aircraft certainly felt heavy, it was very stable, easy to trim out. The performance seemed reasonable, and ultimately the Colt was just a very enjoyable aircraft to fly. I think the aircraft systems were the real pleasant surprise here for me during the review. Not that I was expecting anything bad from AT simulations, but usually with the famous flyer series of course the fidelity has been generally toned down a little bit, that certainly wasn't the case here. Overall I was very impressed with the system's depth on the aircraft. Pretty much everything seemed to be clickable and there was as well associated systems functionality behind those switches. Even the finer details were taken care of, for example you can't actually set the parking brake unless you open up the pneumatic valve, the aircraft will still roll. I really liked the fact as well that the engine management seemed pretty reasonable, you do actually have to operate the oil cooler shutters, the cow flaps as well to keep your temperatures within limits. So far as I'm aware there's no associated failure with operating the engine incorrectly, which is a shame it would have been nice to see that, but nevertheless overall I think the system's depth on the aircraft is very good. Sounds once again there were just one or two areas that could use touching up, but the sounds I thought were generally very nice. Internally the aircraft sounds great, although perhaps just a little bit muted with the windows closed, we actually had the windows open there throughout the entirety of the flight. Externally, it's always a little bit tricky to assess, but perhaps just lacking that slight radial purr I would say with the external engine sounds. The aircraft was also very FPS friendly, I was getting around 94 FPS in the AN2 versus around 100 FPS in the default Cessna 152. So the aircraft is also a great option for anyone running on a lower end system or perhaps VR users as well. And as I've already mentioned, at this sort of price I think it's actually very hard not to recommend the AN2 to all of you really, I think it's an excellent aircraft that will most likely bring an awful lot of fun and enjoyment to you in the sim. At any rate, I'm certainly very happy with my purchase, and I know I'll be spending many more hours with the Colt. Once again, I do hope you enjoyed the video and found it to be of use. If you did, then please consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. As always, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support, it is hugely appreciated. And lastly, I do hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are, take really good care, and I will see you all again soon.